you doing? Oh, um, just reading some news. Good news? Not so much. Mostly bad news. What happened now? Fires, lawsuits, arrests, COVID, racial injustice. That's a lot. There's a lot of problems. Is the news always bad? It does seem that way, doesn't it? Yeah. Is there ever any good news? Sure. Good news happens in the world every day all around us, in our family, our neighborhoods, our church. But sometimes it seems like nothing good is happening anywhere, and that's when I think about... Jesus, right? Yeah. How did you know what I was thinking? Mm. Yeah, I think about Jesus, uh, his life, and Easter. Mm. But Jesus' story wasn't all good news, was it? No, you're right. Jesus faced a lot of bad news. But his story is about the good news overcoming the bad news. What was Jesus' good news? The Sermon on the Mount? We learned about that in Sunday school. Yeah, you're right. Jesus went up on the mountainside to talk to a lot of people. Hmm. Is that, that, is that a sermon? That sounds like a sermon. Sermons are boring. Well, not for the people that came to listen. They felt really inspired by what he had to say. He talked about how the people who are poor, lonely, sad, and sick would be blessed. And he also taught and wanted everyone to know that God's kingdom was different, different from any other kingdom or government on earth. Hmm, that does sound like good news. Tell us more, Jesus. Tell us about the kingdom of heaven. How do we get into this kingdom? What do we do? Do we have to do sacrifices? Do you have to pay for it or is it invitational only? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Ask for what exactly? Is it a big door? Where do we knock? Where is this door? Are you saying that we just ask and God will give things to us? I want a puppy! I need a new tunic! And a camel! Does God know my size? Where are these things that's God giving us? Shh! Let Jesus explain. Alright, let me ask you this. Which of you, if your child asks for a bread, will give them a stone? Or, if they ask for a fish, will you give them a snake? What? No! Never! Who does that? That's just mean! Exactly! You know how to give good gifts to your children, so just imagine how good God's gifts will be to those who ask. Oh, I see what you did there. Nice! Nice! God loves you just like a loving parent. God's kingdom is the kingdom of love. Share that love and everything you do Treat others how you want to be treated. That's the kingdom of God. Oh, that's a good rule. So golden, so wise. I could listen to this guy forever. Now, let me tell you about the narrow gate and the wide gate. Wait, there's a gate now? The Sermon on the Mount is one of my favorite Bible passages. Does anything else happen? Yeah, Jesus taught the people a lot. Mm, more talking? That seems kind of boring, like boring news. Well, that can be true. Good news really isn't good news if it's all talk. Sometimes people talk too much. That's very true. How's your hot chocolate? Good, how's your coffee? I'm all out. You should have some of this. It does look really good. It's really good. Hey, can you think about a time when Jesus not only said good things, but did something good? Hmm, he was nice to Mary Magdalene when everyone else was mean to her. That's true. Or Zacchaeus. Nobody liked Zacchaeus, but then Jesus came over and ate at his house. That was a big deal. It was. Or... Or when the grown-ups wanted the kids to leave Jesus alone, but then Jesus was like, kids, come here, and gave them all candy and hugs. <laughs> well, maybe not candy. Oh, what about when Jesus fed five gazillion people? The feeding of the thousands? Yeah. 
That's a really good one. When Jesus fed all those people and even his own disciples think, thought there wasn't going to be enough food. Food is good news. Food is good news. You are healed. I am? I am! I'm healed! Thank you, Jesus! All right, all right. Thank you. <laughs> I believe that was the last one. Are you sure? Jesus, we're in the middle of nowhere, and it's getting late. We just send the crowd away so they can get themselves food in the village. Why would we send them away? Just give them something to eat. We only have five loaves of bread and two fish. Well, mathematically speaking, there's thousands of people, Jesus. We couldn't possibly bring the food but we're hungry too coming right up holy god thank you for these loaves of bread and these fish you are a loving god who gives us food amen Go. And there you go. And there you go. All right, we got a little food here. Everyone needs to share. Please don't take too much. All right, there's only so much to go around, so. <laughs> Pass it around. Don't spill it. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. Bless, Bless you. you. Wonderful. Bless you. Wonderful. Wonderful. I need some over here. Is there any left? Yeah, some over here. Who still needs some? There's a bunch more over here. <laughs> Who hasn't had any? Have you already had some? Very good. Very good. Mm. That mm. hits the spot. Tasty. Yum. That hits the spot. Here's a lot more. Who wants seconds? Or thirds. Here, take some more. There's even more over here. I'm good, I'm good. thank you. Thank you. I'm, full. I'm full. No, I'm full. I, I couldn't eat another bite. Oh, everyone says they're full. They're all full. Where did... How did... I think... I think we've just witnessed a miracle. Wow, Jesus was like a good news machine. Totally. Good news for everybody. Well... What? Not everybody saw it that way. You, but you said Jesus was all about good news. Sometimes good news for some is bad news for others. When Jesus told the people who didn't have a lot of power that they were blessed, that made community, religious leaders, kings, and even the emperor angry and fearful. They were scared Jesus' message would make them lose their power. And they didn't want that? No, they did not. That happens a lot. Where do you see that happen? Well, when people think they're more important or, or better than others, it makes them feel powerful, in control, like a bully. But power isn't the most important thing, is it? Nope, it's love. You know it. Jesus lived a life of love for the people teaching and showing them that God loved them no matter who they were. And that's why people in power made a plan to arrest Jesus the same night he and his disciples were having a special meal. Oh, Bartholomew, I love it when you sing. More lamb? I believe I will. Who needs some bread? Over here, James. There you are, James. Mm. Thank you, James. Wine, anyone? 
Um, yes, please. Here you go, Judas. Teacher, would you tell us about that funny story again? The one where your parents lost you for three days? I love that one. Where have you been? We've been worried sick. And then you said... Where else would I be but my father's house? I do love that story. But tonight, there's something else I need to share with you. Something serious. This meal is more special than you know. I need you here with me because soon I will suffer greatly. God, thank you for this cup of wine. Take this cup and take a drink, each of you. I am not going to drink again until God's kingdom comes. God, thank you for this bread. This is my body which is given to you. Do this to remember me. This cup poured out for you is the new covenant in my body. Friends, I always knew I was going to suffer. No one can change that. And one of you is going to betray, betray me. Who? Not I. Nor me. I would never. No way. I'm your number one fan. No, I'm his number one fan. You know that, John. He loves Peter more than he loves you, Matthew. You will all scatter and hide at the same time of my suffering. But I have prayed that your faith will not fail you, that you will come back together to serve and strengthen one another. Jesus, you know I would go to jail for you. I would die for you. Peter, before the sun rises tomorrow, you will pretend you don't know me three times. These are difficult times. Come, put on your sandals and let's go when we can pray. I'm going to pray alone. Stay here and pray with me. Of course, Jesus. Father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Why are you sleeping? Stay up and pray with me in the face of these hard times. Look, there's Judas. He's come with armed men. They come here with their weapons drawn as if I was an armed robber. I was with the people all day after day in the temple, and they did not lay a hand on me then. But they are going to do what they are going to do. This is the troubling time, a time of suffering. And then they arrested him? He didn't even do anything wrong. He was innocent, but that didn't matter to the people in power. Why? People of power often don't want their worlds to change, and Jesus' message of justice and love was changing everything, so they wanted to silence him. Talk about bad news. Bad news for Jesus and all of his followers. When Jesus was arrested, some of his disciples were so frightened they ran away and hid. I would too. I'd hide under my bed. Bad news is hard to face, especially when it's scary bad. But the power people didn't win, did they? What do you think? Mm, well, they did kill Jesus, but first they wanted to embarrass and hurt him. They did. And then they killed him. Yes, they did. It's a sad, horrible story. That's the worst news. It really was. But that wasn't the end, was it? Nope. There was good news to come. Huge news. Easter news. Yeah. Do you know who were the very first preachers of that good Easter news? Women. Of course they were. Which ones? We're not really sure who was there, but we do know a group of women went out to visit the tomb where Jesus had been buried. <laughs> Joanna, I have not stopped crying for two days. 
I miss him so much. How can he be gone? Our beloved teacher and friend. Remember when he healed my son's hand? Or when he stood up, the religious leader accusing me of sin. He was always there for us, serving everyone and challenging everyone. <laughs> oh, he never let me off the hook, that's for sure. Remember the scripture he read in the temple? He said, God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. The people in charge didn't like that. No, they didn't. And they took him away from us. Look at the tomb, the stone. It's been removed. Someone has stolen his body. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. What? Jesus is risen. Way. Yes, way. You can be serious. Remember what Jesus said in Galilee? He told you that he would be killed and then rise again on the third day. He did. He totally did. Go tell the other disciples that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. This is actually happening. This is incredible. This is, is so Jesus. Come on, we have to tell the others. Right. But they'll never believe us. It doesn't matter. God wants us to share the good news with everyone, whether they believe us or not. Hallelujah, sister. Let's go. So did anyone believe the women? Not at first. Their news seemed too good to be true. The other's disciples eventually figured it out. Mm, so they had to see the empty tomb for themselves. That's right. And later on, Jesus even appeared to many of them. He was risen. The disciples began to realize that Jesus saved his biggest news for last. The super good news. The good news that death, the biggest baddest news, doesn't have the last word. That there is new life, hope, and possibility in the power of the resurrection. Then how come there's still a lot of bad news? Like, a lot. There's always bad news. And sometimes, like the disciples, we feel like hiding and giving up. But after Jesus' resurrection, his disciples stopped hiding. They went out and continued Jesus' ministry. They reached out to all kinds of people who were used to hearing only bad news and taught them about love, forgiveness, and acceptance of outsiders. They cared for the sick, fed the poor, visited people in prison, and shared everything they had. They weren't just telling the good news of Jesus. They lived it. Wow, they did all that? They did, and you know what? What? The good news for you and me too, because we have to live and share the good news of Jesus today. Followers of Jesus still bring good news to ourselves, our families, our friends, and our neighbors. Our church congregation follows the way of Jesus. When we hand out Thanksgiving baskets, Christmas gift cards, help with people's rent or mortgages, and also just support each other during this time. When we do these things, we are responding to Jesus' call to live out the scriptures of Luke 4, which states, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When the bad news of our world feels overwhelming, we can reach out to one another, support and strengthen each other, and remind each other the message that Jesus lives on, in us and through us. That's the best news. And you know, if you're ever feeling discouraged, I want you to come to me and I'll remind you of the good news Jesus is still bringing into the world. And if you forget, I'll remind you. You always do. 
We all need to be reminded of the good news. Every day.